What's up, guys? Welcome to another version of the Ask Vince show. I always feel weird saying that, but we're here and we're doing it. So, welcome back. Welcome, Matt. How are you Hello. doing today? Doing great today. Yep. Matt's here. He's going to ask me some questions. I needed a warm body to ask, read three questions. And so that's how, what I found. Guy on the street to ask me a couple questions. Uh, hey, before we get started, do us a favor and, you know, click follow show. It used to be subscribe to the podcast, right? But now it's just follow show. So if you're listening to this and you want to be notified when we put out new episodes or you like the show, just click follow the show. That'll help us. And if you really want to help, um, well, actually, the follow the show button really helps you. It doesn't help us because it just allows you to get notified. Uh, if you really want to help us, um, leave us a five-star review if you like uh, the podcast. So there we go. That's kind of housekeeping for for the day, but we got three good questions um, to answer today. But first, I want to I have a couple of cool announcements coming up. Um, I've been talking back and forth with the people that perform better who, you know, they run some of the best seminars in the fitness industry. And I've been a speaker of theirs for uh, a long time and uh, just got the speaking uh, slots. So I'll be speaking in uh, Providence, Rhode Island and in um, Long Beach. So going all the way out to Cali. So excited about that. And I'm also doing a two day workshop with them, just me for two days uh, in Providence, Rhode Island at the perform better headquarters. Um, I think that's going to be in May at some point. I'll have more details on that coming, uh, soon for that. So a lot of cool things going on in our world. And we got the SPF mastermind meeting coming up on March May. 10th and 11th, March, May, March 10th. And 11th. Are you going down there? Are you going? Am I? You I tell me. I don't know. I gotta. I gotta see if you're worth a plane ticket uh, to go down <laughs> to Orlando. Tell me soon. We'll I gotta see. return it then. All right. Good. Oh, you got a plane ticket? Yeah. Oh, good. So you are going. Um, interesting thing. We got like a. So we're bringing the whole Kiss marketing team down as well, and uh, so there's like ten of them, and we got like this big house uh, the, uh, for everyone to stay in. The FBU Jersey Shore house <laughs> down yeah. in Florida, and I. And I was, me and Joe Hashi were slated to stay in the house. And the more and more people we saw going, the more and more Joe and I were like, okay, we're not staying in that house. We're staying, getting hotel rooms like grown 40-year-old men instead of being in a house. Like, I was like thinking like, what if like, you know, like, I don't know. I, I didn't want to like even <laughs> talk about it, but it's just like, you know, it's weird. I'm going to get my own room, stand by myself, king bed. Just me. That's what I want. In your fortress of solitude. Uh, exactly. So, um, but yeah, but that's coming up on May or no, March. I'm gonna March. May. Uh, March 10th and 11th in Orlando, Florida. If you want to join us, uh, we do have a guest pass, a guest pass available. Uh, I think Matt can throw the link in the show notes if you want to apply to join us at the March 10th and 11th mastermind meeting in Orlando. Uh, should be a great time. The theme of it is called Stock the Pond. So we're going to help gym owners stock the pond with leads, as many leads as they can possibly get. So it's going to be great. So Matt, you got any questions for me today? Yeah, let's get into it. So first question today is, what is the most important thing to focus on to have good retention? Well, um, First, I'll talk about this concept that I think I've been talking about a lot lately. Sometimes it blurs, like, when I talk about stuff, like I've talked about, because I just do so much talking. It's my whole <laughs> life is talking. Uh, and that's why I go home and Vanessa's like, I never say anything. And she's like, you use all your words today? And I was like, honey, I use all my words every day. So I just, between all the mastermind calls and all the NCA calls and all the podcasts, and so there's just a lot of talking. So sometimes it all blurs together. But... There's this concept I've been talking about a lot called retention creep. And, you know, what used to be like a pretty normal standard 3% attrition is like creeping up to like closer to 5 
Now, it's like not, not saying everyone's at five, right? There's just not like a hard rule. Like there was probably some people that were 2%. But at the end of the day, just based on what's happened in the world, um, people are like more a little more flighty. I, do, I also do think a lot of gyms have gone uh, away from 12-month contracts. And I think that that is another thing where it's easier for people to leave. Um, so I, I, I think that and I'm not saying that's a wrong decision. It's kind of a bigger topic of discussion on should you do month to month or should you do uh, annual agreements? I think there's positives and negatives of both. Um, but I do think there's a retention problem. And you can only do the best that you can. Right. Um, you can't force people to stay. There's a lot of things that, you know, are out of your control that happen. I think the one thing to understand too, is if you have one bad month of retention, it's not like the end of the world and it shouldn't be something that you're freaking out about. Um, my best friend, Mike Waldron tells me to think in trends. And yeah, what so, is that rule? You have three months, I believe. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, that's kind of really what tell you that it's a trend uh, because it's like, you know, we had someone on the mastermind call and they were like freaking out that one month they had 6% attrition. And I was like, all right, it's, it was January. And I was like, well, what was your attrition in January last year? And they're like, they looked at me kind of confused and they're like, they went and looked it up real quick and it was exactly the same. Right. So sometimes it's like based on when you have clients up for membership, like it could be that like, um, so it's, it, it, it's, there's a lot of factors to it, but I think it's very important for people to, to track their attrition. Um, it's, it's the difference you, as a marketing guy that I am, you can't fill a leaking bucket. So you have to have this in check. Right. Um, so there's this legitimate issue of retention skewing higher. Um, some of it's out of our control, but there's things that we can do to control. And here's number one, what I feel. It's like, if you want most important, if that's the question this person is asking, um, I believe the most important factor is that people are showing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start. That, it's, like, it's like, if you want most important, it's like, all right, um, uh, tracking attendance and having a good system for tracking attendance. And I know um, Summit, who's uh, in the SPF Mastermind, he's a, he's a member of the SPF Mastermind. Um, he owns a, a company called Nomly, which helps with this type of stuff. Um, tracking attendance and communicating with members and everything like that. Um, but I would say if there's one most important thing to focus on, it is attendance because that's the telltale sign that people are using the, 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 the services that you're providing. And that's the base level of like, if they're going to stay or go, like, it's usually rare that someone comes to you and they're like coming three days a week and they're kicking ass and loving the workouts. And all of a sudden they just cancel their membership. And usually if they do do that, it's because of a very, very specific reason that most likely is out of your control. It's the person that goes three days a week and then they start going down to two days a week and then they start going down to one day a week and then they're sporadically thinking they're canceling all the time and rescheduling all the time. And then Put me on pause. they're getting busy at work, right? They're, they are going to leave soon, right? And so probably the best thing that people can do for retention is just to be on top of that. Um, it's kind of like the, this, it's like paying attention to what Kennedy calls alarm bells, right? And, and attendance is a form of an alarm bell. He tells, Kennedy tells the story of the, the three old men that go to the diner at seven o'clock in the morning every Tuesday. And they've gone to that diner at seven o'clock in the morning every Tuesday. And they never don't show. And all of a sudden, one Tuesday, they don't show. <laughs> the diner owner should be like driving to the homes of these men to see what the hell is wrong. 
And the longer the diner owner goes that he doesn't keep in touch with these guys that didn't show, the better chance that they're going to leave. Right? Um, so it, it's like if you want one thing. Now, there's multiple things. There's so many things that can be done. We can talk about, you know, what gyms need to be doing to improve their product and everything like that. And then, But, but if we want to keep this simple and say, all right, the most important thing to focus on is to make sure people are showing up to the gym. And literally, the, if they show up, they're – there's a good chance they're gonna they're gonna stay. Um, we have actually have a sign on our door that says uh, you just um, where you just did the hard part. Uh, we'll take it from we'll here. We'll take it from here. Yeah. That's what it says on our door. And basically, it's like the hard part is showing up. And so many people talk about that. I had a friend uh, a friend that gave me that sticker. His name is Paul, and. Uh, he gave me that sticker like probably many, many years ago. And it's something that's still on our door today. And um, it, people talk about it all the time. It's like, yeah, that is the hard part. Their part showing up. Right. Um, so that's probably it. And I'm at, I to answer that question. It's like, if the, what's the most important thing to focus on for good retention is that you have your finger on the pulse of your attendance. Um, and if you have someone that's signed up to come 12 times a month, uh, and they come nine, that there's an alarm bell that goes off that tells you, hey, this person didn't show up to three of the sessions. And they probably need a phone call or they probably need to be reached out to. Um, but you got to own that first. And if you're listening to this and you don't own that part of your business, you got to get on that immediately. And if I, every other tip that I would give you to improve retention would be useless if they don't show up to your door. So that's it. That's my answer. Yeah, and all that retention stuff, I mean, you talk about you can't fill a leaky bucket, and you always say the soup's got to be good. And, uh, you know, if you're tracking attendance, that's all good. But it's no good if you're not refilling those people who, well, you know, you, that, that you attrition. You glossed over the soup thing. So I don't think the podcast listeners know what that means, and I'll explain it really quickly. All right. So um, – I have a, one of my best friends is an acupuncturist. He's one of the best acupuncturists it's like around. And he um, literally, he does no marketing at all. He's completely booked. Like you can't, like I get, I can get in because he gets me in. And, but like, I can't refer to him anymore. I don't refer to him anymore because he can't get people in. He has like a six month waiting list or something like that. And he keeps like raising his prices. And every time he raises prices, the waiting list gets longer. It's crazy. Um, but he and I were talking about a friend who was a chiropractor. And this, this guy just like, he, if you're like a solo practitioner and you can't fill your own book, you suck. <laughs> you you, you kind of just suck. Like if you, you, you have eight hours a day that you can work. If you can't, if you're a professional and you're doing this for a living and you can't fill eight hours a day, you kind of just suck. And so what he said to me is, uh, we were talking about this guy and he was like, he just very like casually said this, yeah, the soup sucks. <laughs> and I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, he has the soup sucks. He's like, well, the, the product. Because as, at a base level, like, I, and again, I, I'm, I'm a marketing guy, but at a base level, your product needs to be good enough for enough people to at least talk about it, right? Maybe the, the soup being good is not going to be able to get you to open up five gyms. If you're going to open up five gyms, you've got to be good operationally, you've got to be good at marketing, right? But hey, as an independent trainer, you should be able to fill eight hours a day with sessions just on being pretty decent at what you do, Right? Um, so that's the whole point of like the soup. So the soup means like your product, the soup is your trainers and how they deliver the service. The, the soup is, you know, your program design and all of that. Um, so that's kind of what that means. Cause I don't, I don't think the listeners understood that. So that's gotcha. the story behind it. All right. What's the next question? Yeah, so, so catering to your existing members is all good, but with the attrition rates going up, you got to restock that membership. So. What's the best way to turn as many leads into clients as possible in order to fight that attrition? What's the best way to turn as many leads as possible 
into clients. Uh, dude, this is where people lose the most money. People lose the most money um, in not having a good system to get leads to come in through the door. Um, they not only lose them on the short term, they lose them on the long term. Uh, there was a, a study I, I heard done from the data handling inquiry service that Dean Jackson told me about this. Um, but basically, they said out of 100 people, typically 50, that, out of 100 people that inquire to buy something, 50% will buy. Okay. But out of that 50% that buy, only 15% buy in the first 100 days and 85 percent buy in the next 100 weeks so what does that tell you out of 50 people that buy seven of them which is 15 percent seven of them are most likely going to buy in the first you know 100 days but the rest of them, 30-something of them, which is 85%, are going to buy in the next 100 weeks. And, and the problem is that people do not have any kind of system to manage that and keep track of it. So I believe the best way to turn as many leads into clients as possible is to have a very good short-term follow-up but also a very very good long-term follow-up meaning your short-term follow-up is like all right someone opts in what happens immediately well the hell you should have an automated text that goes out immediately you should have a phone call that goes out immediately um that there's a we we teach a 21 day sequence of what happens in the first 21 days right but then after that after the first 21 days if they don't respond or they ghost there's a process of what happens in the next 100 weeks. And usually people don't have a system built around that. Now, um, Matt, did you know if you order something on Amazon that, and I believe this is true for just the East Coast. I would, could be mistaken here, but there's a, there's a, and it must be big. I've never seen it, but it must be massive. There's a, there's a, a place in Maryland that has a, where Amazon brings all the stuff. And when you order for something from Amazon, it goes from Maryland to your door. Right. Didn't know it was in Maryland. Yeah. It's, it's in Maryland. Okay. Um, and maybe there's more, I'm sure there's more of them right now. Oh, right. Yeah. But it's apparently this month, like if, like I, I would assume, cause like I ordered, protein powder the other day from Amazon and I got like uh, this this um, re it's really good new protein powder I just wanted to try some different stuff it came then literally like in eight hours it was like crazy yeah, like it's how fast now. it comes it's crazy right yeah um, so if I ordered that from the headquarters of this supplement company in California it wouldn't have come but since the Amazon stocked it in Maryland it came to my door the next day Right. And so um, Amazon has this incubator where everything goes. And so all of the most important thing that, that you need to make sure to keep track of all this stuff is that there's one place where it all goes. And I have had the same conversations with you um, and many other staff members about um, time management. Right. And task stuff. Right. When someone comes, something comes across your desk or someone tells you to do something, if you don't put it somewhere, that it's gone. It's, it's, it's out into the ether, and maybe your subconscious mind stores it and it pulls it back. But most of the time, it's gone. And so you need some kind of an incubator where everything goes. So, for example, like I get stuff thrown at me all the time, and I have this system that I use called Evernote. Right? And it goes into Evernote. Like everything in my world goes just into Evernote. If I can't do it right away, it goes into Evernote. And now I know that that's that one place where everything is stored. And it enables me to not let things slip through the cracks. Well, people need this for their leads. 
now, you know, I'm biased to what we use and at convert at uh, Kiss Marketing, which is called Convert Cloud, which is basically like a sales and marketing CRM where it's like the most organized, simple process to use. Um, so I'm biased to that, but there's other softwares out there like that. But that was probably the thing is you need a really good system. Can't be an where, Excel spreadsheet. Where every, it sh- probably shouldn't be. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's yeah. the key word you said a while ago was automated. It's got to be automated. You cannot waste time. Yeah. Worrying. Did I send that text? Uh Uh-oh. Where'd it go? Where did this person reach out to me? I don't know. It's so much wasted time. It's crazy. Yeah. So I think that that's uh, that's where um, it's got to go. I mean, I guess if you're just starting out and you have like six clients, like you could use that resource. But like, yeah, if you want to be. So so that's what I'm saying. So one kind of incubator where everything goes and that's like you look at that every day. Right. And there's a lot of people like, like, well, if you don't have a lead today, like if you want to get a client in the door like tomorrow, well, you don't have to get a lead today. You can go to all the past leads, you know, that you've had and get a new client in. Right. But but the best way to turn as many new clients, many leads into clients as possible is have an organized, structured system that enables you to do that. Now, you kind of got a little bit into this topic before talking about making the soup good. But the question is, if you could pick only one way to generate referrals, what would it be? A lot of very, a lot of absolutes in these questions. People want to know the answer. <laughs> They're putting uh, you on the there, spot. Yeah, right? There's a hundred of them. Um, so I would say if I had one thing to generate referrals, I would pick the point of sale referral system. Um, And the reason, so what that is really quickly is the point of sale referral system is when you sign up a member, you give them a card, postcard, credit card, metal card, whatever, that is a gift to give to a friend for a free something free training session, free 30 day membership, whatever you do, it doesn't matter, but the, it can't be like a, it's gotta be something that's a substantial thing that they would want to give out. Right. So we almost like making them the hero by giving this thing out, um, that you present this to them when they buy. And here's the, the, the reasoning why, um, w- everyone that, is listening to this there's probably experience matt um buying a car or looking for a car right and while you're going through that process of buying a specific car let's just say it, it's a honda civic in this case right and you're looking to buy a, a beautiful new honda civic and all of a sudden every car on the road that you see is a honda civic and like did Honda Civic just start, you know, Honda just start putting out more Civics to drive close to you to remind you? No, it's just like you're noticing it more. Right. And it's a it's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system that gets lit up when things are kind of new. And so the same thing is going through the people's minds when they sign up for a gym. There's that freshness. There's that newness of, hey, I just joined this new gym and I like it. It's really cool. And. The people are really nice, and it's like it, it's like the honeymoon phase, right? Um, that's the best time to take advantage of it. So I would I would have that as a very structured process. Um, one part of it being that it happens every time, that it doesn't happen some of the time, that it happens every time. That every time you sign up a new member, there's a process of pulling out your referral card and having the conversation with them about who they want to invite to take them up on this offer. And then two, there's systematized documents that go with it being what is the physical nature look like, or if it's not a physical card, which I think it should be, 
if it's not a physical card, is there, a, you know, an email exchange or something like that that enables them to um, to make it easier for them to refer, right? Because that's kind of what you want. You want to make it as simple as possible for people to refer. Um, so if I could pick only one, there's a couple more that come to mind that I want to start unpacking, but you only asked for one, so I'm not going to work harder than I need to. Um but yeah, at the point of sale, when you sign up a new member, they are given some kind of a gift to give to a friend and it never doesn't happen. Um, that would be the one I would use. Now, what do you uh, think of integrating that into a follow-up system? Because if you get them you know, right at the point of sale, maybe they're already starting to enjoy the gym, maybe they went through a trial, something like that, but they haven't really been part of the gym's culture yet. They're not really fully bought into their honeymoon phase yet. So... What are your thoughts on reaching out to them with an email later or a text later saying, hey, just a reminder, if you have any friends who are looking to get started with their fitness journey, send them over, something like that. Yeah, and, and it's funny because that is exactly what we do you know, here at GFP is we give them the metal card. And so the metal card is like this, like if, you, if I was to drop it, like you'd hear it. It's like <laughs> robust. I wish there was one right here. I'd do it. Yeah. Um, and so what we do is we kind of angle it like since we're giving them this metal card, it's like something of value. You don't throw that out. <laughs> we don't. Th- yeah, it's you don't throw it out. Like it's no metal. one gets a metal card yeah. and throws it out. And so if we don't get a referral, you know, within a week, there's a prompt for an email to go out that sends a message that sounds something like, hey, have you decided who you want to give your metal card to? And basically just hanging a question out there. So I think it's a great question, Matt, and I think, yes, uh, there should be follow-up. Um, just like there's follow-up with leads, there should be follow-up with referrals. Um, and again, you're not going to like beat people down. And I, I do know <laughs> businesses that make it mandatory to refer. Wow. Um yeah, there's a, I think he's a dentist out in Australia, but he literally, like, it's mandatory. And if you get fired as a client, if you don't refer, it's like, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, but he just, he makes it part of the process. It's part of the process. It's part of being a client. Um, it's brilliant, but um, I haven't gone that far yet, but. Um, that's quite a Yeah, lead. so I think uh, some kind of a follow-up for this would be, um is very helpful and very effective. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's it for the questions. That's all the questions we got? Yeah, we're good for today. All right. Well, guys, hopefully this was helpful. Again, do us a favor or do yourself a favor and click follow the show button because if you click follow show, you get notified when we send out new episodes. I I guess that helps us too. We get more followers. And then do us a favor by leaving a five-star review. what that really does yeah if we have a lot of followers but no one sees that number it would probably help if we you if you left us a five-star review that would be awesome so um hopefully this was helpful matt thank you so much cool you're welcome see you guys next week peace what's up guys thanks so much for listening do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast this way you'll get notified when we get new episodes come out and if you really really loved it I'd truly appreciate it if you left us a five-star rating. So thanks so much. If you're looking for more free stuff uh, from me, head over to vincesfreebook.com. You'll get a free copy of my marketing book. And just head over to vincesfreebook.com and I'll send you a copy. Thanks.